In an extraordinary revelation, the Mother of God speaks of the greatness and perfection of the life of St. Benedict. The Blessed Virgin Mary also speaks of a monk who apostatized from God. Virgo Potens presents Book 3, Chapters 21 to 23, from Prophecies and Revelations by St. Bridget of Sweden. The Mother of God's Words to St. Bridget showing the greatness and perfection of the life of St. Benedict, by means of a comparison. Also, the soul that bears worldly fruit is represented as a fruitless tree, the pride of mind as flint, and the cold soul as crystal, and about three noteworthy sparks arising from these three things. Example, from the crystal, the flint, and the tree. Chapter 21 the Mother of God speaks. I told you before that the body of Blessed Benedict was like a sack that was disciplined and ruled, but did not rule. His soul was like an angel, giving off a lot of heat and flame. I will show you this by means of a comparison. It is as though there were three fires. The first of them was lit with myrrh and produced a sweet odor. The second was lit with dry kindle. It produced hot embers and a splendid blaze. The third was lit with olive oil. It produced flames, light, and heat. These three fires refer to three persons, and the three persons refer to three states in the world. The first was the state of those who reflected on God's love and surrendered their wills into the hands of others. They accepted poverty and humility in place of worldly vanity and pride, and loved continence and purity in place of intemperance. Theirs was the fire of myrrh, for just as myrrh is pungent but keeps demons away and quenches thirst, so too their abstinence was pungent to the body, yet quenched their inordinate desires and drained away all the power of the demons. The second state was that of those who had the following thought. Why do we love worldly honors? They are nothing but the air that brushes past our ears. Why do we love gold? It is nothing but yellow dirt. What is the end of the body, if not rot and ashes? How does it help us to desire earthly goods? All things are vanity. Therefore, we shall live and work for one purpose alone, that God may be glorified in us and that others may burn with love for God through our word and example. The fire of such people was that of the dry kindle, inasmuch as they were dead to the love of the world, and all of them produced hot embers of justice and the blaze of holy evangelization. The third state was that of those with a fervent love for the passion of Christ, who longed with all their hearts to die for Christ. Theirs was the fire of olive oil. The olive contains oil that gives off a scorching heat when it is burned. In the same way, these people were drenched in the oil of divine grace. Through it they produced the light of divine knowledge, the heat of fervent charity the strength of upright conduct. These three fires spread far and wide. The first of them was lit in hermits and religious, as described by Jerome, who, inspired by the Holy Spirit, found their lives wonderful and exemplary. The second fire was lit in the confessors and doctors of the church while the third was in the martyrs who despised their own flesh for God's sake, and others who would have despised it had they obtained help from God. Blessed Benedict was sent to people belonging to these three states or fires. He fused the three fires together in such a way that the unwise were enlightened, the cold-hearted were inflamed, the fervent became more fervent still. Thus, with these fires began the Benedictine order that guided each person according to his disposition and intellectual capacity along the way of salvation and eternal happiness. From the sack of Blessed Benedict blew the sweetness of the Holy Spirit 
through which many monasteries were started. However, now the Holy Spirit has left the sack of many of his brothers, for the heat of the ashes has been extinguished, and the firebrands lie scattered about, giving off neither heat nor light, but the smoke of impurity and greed. However, God has given me three sparks, so as to bring consolation to many people. The three stand for many sparks. The first spark was obtained with a crystal from the heat and light of the sun, and has already settled on the dry kindle, in order that a great fire may be made from it. The second spark was obtained with hard flint. The third spark came from a fruitless tree, whose roots were growing and that was spreading its foliage. The crystal, that cold and fragile stone, represents the soul who, while she may be cold in her love for God, still seeks perfection in her heart and will, and prays for God's help. Her intention thus leads her to God, and earns for her an increase of trials that makes her grow cold towards base temptations, until God enlightens the heart and settles in the soul now emptied of desire, so that she no longer wants to live for anything but the glory of God. Flint represents pride. What is harder than the intellectual pride of a person who wants to be praised by everyone, yet longs to be called humble and to seem devout? What is more loathsome than a soul that places herself ahead of everyone else in her thoughts and cannot put up with being rebuked or taught by anyone? Nevertheless, many proud persons pray humbly to God that pride and ambition be removed from their hearts. God, therefore, with the cooperation of their good will, presents adversities to their hearts, and at times consolations that draw them away from worldly things, and spur them on toward heavenly. The fruitless tree represents the soul that is fed on pride and bears worldly fruit and desires to have the world and all its privileges. However, because this soul has a fear of eternal death, she uproots many of the saplings of sins she would otherwise commit if she had no such fear. Because of her fear, God draws near to the soul, and inspires his grace in her, so that the useless tree might become fruitful. By means of such sparks of fire, the order of Blessed Benedict, which now seems abject and abandoned to many people, should be renewed. The Mother of God's Words to St. Bridget about a monk with a harlot's heart in his breast, and about how he apostatized from God through his own will and greed and his desertion of the angelic life. Chapter 22 the Mother of God speaks to St. Bridget again. What do you see that is blameworthy in this man here? She answered, that he rarely says Mass. The Mother of God said to her, It is not for that reason that he is to be sentenced. There are many men who, mindful of their deeds, refrain from saying Mass, but are no less acceptable to me. What else do you see in him? And she said in reply, that he does not wear the habit established by Blessed Benedict. The Mother of God replied back, It often happens that a custom gets started, and those who know it to be a bad custom, but still follow it, deserve blame. However, those who do not know the correct traditions, and who even prefer a simple habit, had it not been for the long-standing custom, are not to be so easily and thoughtlessly condemned. Listen, however, and I will tell you three reasons why he should be blamed. First, because his heart, in which God should rest, is in the breast of harlots. Second, because he has given up the little he possessed, but longs for the greater possessions of others. Having promised to deny himself, he completely follows his own will and whim. Third, because God made his soul as beautiful as an angel, and for that reason he should be leading an angelic life. But now his soul instead bears the image of that angel who apostatized from God through pride. 
People account him great as a man, but God knows what sort he is before God. God is like a person who closes his fist about something and keeps it hidden from others until he opens his fist. God chooses weak creatures and keeps their crowns hidden in the present life until he rewards each person according to his deeds. Explanation This man was a very worldly-minded abbot who cared nothing for souls and who died suddenly without the sacraments. The Holy Spirit said about him, O soul, you loved the earth and now the earth has received you. You were dead in your life, and now you will not have my life, nor be a sharer with me. Since you loved the company of him who apostatized from me through pride and despised true humility. The Answer of God the Father to St. Bridget's Prayers for Sinners And about three witnesses on earth and three in heaven and about how the whole trinity bears witness to the bride, and about how she is his bride through faith, like all those who follow the orthodox faith of the Holy Church. Chapter 23 O oh, my most sweet God, I pray for sinners, to whose company I belong, that you deign to have mercy on them. God the Father answered, I hear and know your intention. Your loving entreaty will therefore be fulfilled. As John says in today's epistle, or rather, as I say through John, there are three witnesses on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and three in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are your witnesses. The Spirit, who protected you in the womb of your mother, bears witness concerning your soul, that you belong to God through the baptismal of faith that your parents professed in your steed. The baptismal water bears witness that you are the daughter of Christ's human nature through regeneration and the healing of original sin. The blood of Jesus Christ that redeemed you bears witness that you are the daughter of God and removed from the power of the devil by the sacraments of the church. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three persons but one in substance and power, we bear witness that you are ours through faith, just as are all those who follow the orthodox faith of the Holy Church. And so that you give witness that you want to do our will, go and receive the body and blood of Christ's human nature from the hand of the priest in order that the Son may bear witness that you belong to him, whose body you receive to strengthen your soul. The Father, who is in the Son, bears witness that you belong to the Father and to the Son. The Holy Spirit, who is in the Father and the Son, the Spirit being in both, bears witness that, through true faith and love, you belong to the three persons and one God. Welcome to the Virgo Potens YouTube channel. If you enjoy this video, give it a like. I also invite you to subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss new content. Please prayerfully consider supporting my work by becoming a patron of Virgo Potens on Patreon and or by buying one of my books. My ebooks are available on Amazon as well as on the Apple Bookstore. For those who prefer a physical copy rather than an ebook, my book, Spiritual Warfare, Know Thy Enemy, is also available as a paperback on Amazon. If you are interested in making a one-time contribution, I suggest that you do so by simply buying one of my books. I am thankful for your support. Links to Patreon and to my books will be posted in the comments section of this video. The continuation of this work isn't possible without you. Lastly, and most importantly, please pray for me. May the Virgin Most Powerful guide and protect you.